Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. From another day in Hoi An. It's a beautiful day, but oh my God, is it hot out here. Yeah, hey it's, it's way Whew. hotter than yesterday. And yesterday was breezy, today it's not, oh. Yeah, just setting up this shot, we're pouring sweat already. It's been like five <laughs> minutes, so. It's gonna be well, pretty rough. we remembered rough. our sunscreen today, so I think we'll be okay at least. Yeah, so in our last video, we uh, got the, a chance to explore the city a bit. There was a lantern festival going on. It was tons of fun, but we didn't get to try that many dishes. Nope. And that was one thing we really wanted to, wanted to do in Hoi An. So we're gonna be doing a little food tour today. Oh, yes we are. We're gonna be eating a lot of noodles, a lot of rice, uh, all kinds of local goodies. Hoi An is known for a lot of local dishes, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be so delicious. We're running a bit late though, and we gotta fit all these yummy things in today. So we gotta head off. Let's go. So we are not off to the best start today. We rolled up to, to our first spot, which we were super excited about, to try a specific dish that's really popular here, but it was closed. Yes. Um, and then actually there were a bunch of stalls just across the street that had it too, but there was so much construction going on that we couldn't even hear ourselves think. It's really extra sad because for this food tour, we actually went out and scouted all these places a couple days ago just to make sure that everything was open and still there because we've had a lot of issues lately with stuff being closed down or having moved you or You just whatever. never know. It was supposed to be open today. Apparently it'll be back open tomorrow. But we ended up finding a place that looked pretty good. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. Kong Gyan? Zan, maybe? But the dish we are trying is Kao Lao, and it is one of the most traditional Hoi An dishes. So it is a specialty right from this area. And I hear that back in the day, the noodles used to be made with the special water from a well, but that's how it was so magically delicious. I don't think that's how they still do it today, but it looks amazing. So the Kao Lao has arrived and our guy made it very quickly. He just has all the ingredients sitting out. So he went over and just kind of assembled it one piece at a time, warmed it all up, and then placed it right in front of us to indulge. This little dish is made up of these really thick, almost udon-like noodles. We've got sliced pork, some fresh local greens, and then pork rinds. And then you can smell it's really peanutty. I think there's peanuts in there. I think the sauce is a peanutty sauce. And you can see there's no broth down in here. So it's, uh, I guess, kind of like a dry noodle dish. And then on the side, we get a whole bunch of limes and fresh peppers. I don't know how much we'll be getting into those. But then you also have your like chili sauce on the side that you can add to spice it up. So I'm not sure that I can get everything in one bite because there are so many ingredients in here. But I definitely want to piece of this crispy pork because that looks really good to me. There we go. Very crunchy. Mm. Get some more noodles in there. It's a really nice and simple dish. You just have the fresh taste of all the ingredients and then a little bit of a peanutty taste. The noodles are great. The pork is nice and flavorful. You get this burst of freshness from the greenery on there. Oh, there's also some mint in there too in the greens. Overall though, I am very pleased with this. It's very nice. Fresh is really the best word. I know I've said that 10 times, but that's the best word I can use to describe this. It just seems so fresh. For Allison, I've recommended her to add the lime and maybe some chili sauce or something, because right. that I think is the only thing that could really take it to the next level. It smells so good. The peanut is what you smell first off, I'd say. I did read that it's kind of like, uh, almost like eating a noodle salad, because the greens are so fresh in there. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Oop, I'm gonna get the noodles. There we go. Mm. I got a little piece of that mint with the greenery and then some of the little sprouts and the noodles and that sauce is really good. It's really nice and peanutty, almost like a, a, like a satay, like a peanut satay sauce. I'm really excited for these little guys. Maybe I'll try a smaller one. Yeah, the crunchy pieces of pork are the highlight for me. They really add the saltiness and the crunchiness, you know. Those are really good. And I read that it can even come with rice crackers on top. Ours does not have that, but I don't think it needs it. So I didn't realize, but when you get down to the bottom, there is a little bit of broth down there, which is really nice. There's a lot of flavor in it. A lot to like about this dish. Y'all, this dish is taking me to my happy place. Once you kind of mix everything together, that's the key because then all the flavors start to really work together. Mm -hmm. You get some of that broth that was down at the bottom. The broth is definitely so good. Yeah. Your first few bites, you don't taste it so much, but towards the end, oh my God. Yeah, I don't want it to end. <laughs> But it's almost over. All good things must come to an end. Well, that was absolutely delicious. It is still technically morning though. And we have not had our coffee yet. And it is also very, very hot. So we're gonna go get a cold caffeinated treat. Oh my. We 
have come to Finn Cafe, which is tucked down this little alley to get this beauty. This is coconut coffee. We got it blended. It should be coconut cream and or milk, or maybe just coconut milk with Vietnamese coffee in there. So I think it'll be really strong and a bit sweet and super coconutty and perfect for such a hot, hot day. Oh my gosh. Is that good? Oh, it's really good. Oh, it tastes like, yeah, like a coconut coffee milkshake. You could also spike this and I think that would be really delicious. I love that your mind goes right to alcohol. <laughs> well, because it kind of has the taste of a pina colada because of the coconut and it's frozen. But the coffee is such a nice touch. So it's like really sweet, but it cuts the, the bitterness of the Vietnamese coffee, which some of the coffee we've had has been a little bitter. Mm -hmm. So this is wonderful. Oh, wow. It's sweet, pretty sweet. We heard ahead of time that they make it a little sweet, but it's not that bad. It's blended up, so you got those little crunchy bits of ice in there. There's actually a really strong coffee flavor to it with just a little hint of coconut. It also comes with this adorable little spoon. Mm -hmm. The spoon makes it, you know. I don't know why, because <laughs> you can just shovel it in your mouth. <laughs> it's almost like a, a snow cone a bit. The top is like really icy and crunchy. It's really good. I love that it's so cold. Mm. Guys, they have the cutest little puppy at this cafe. He's so sweet. What you doing? What you doing? <laughs> so some of the places that we're going to today are more local. Some of them are a little bit more well-known, but all the places we're going to get really good ratings. And some of them, like this place was recommended by our Airbnb host. Yeah, so, and it has almost, it has 4.9 out of five stars on Google out of almost 400 reviews. So they're doing something right. But of course, if you know of more local spots or spots that you think are better than these, just leave a comment and let us know so that other people watching this video can check those places out. And maybe when we come back through, we like to take some of the suggestions and try the places that you guys recommend. So leave comments down below. It is the hottest part of the day right now and we can't even stand in the sun right now. It's just taking too much out of us. So we decided to grab a couple cold beverages yeah. of the alcoholic variety. Yes, yeah, so we just did a vodka soda here. Uh, pretty light and refreshing. Yeah, but we wanted to give you guys an idea of the prices. So cocktails are about 50,000 to 65,000 that we've seen and that's in the kind of touristy part of town, mm -hmm. which I don't even think is that bad of a price because it's under three USD and usually in most places we'd pay six dollars would be a good price i think yeah. for and an like a cocktail and the beers sometimes you can find them as cheap oh, yeah. as fifteen thousand. if you're willing to drink beer which we, we've been drinking beer you know but we're trying to take it a little easy on it because it's a little heavy but yeah very very affordable if you do it that way cheers oh yes a food stall to try the next dish that we were super excited about but it turns out they only have the vegetarian version of it that normally isn't a problem but one thing that drew us to this dish is because it should have some different types of well it should have some pork on it some shrimp and a little quail egg and we weren't gonna get any of that at the stall so we decided to go looking for an alternative restaurant mm -hmm. uh, I think we went by five different places they were all either closed or non-existent and then we were just walking on the street and we saw this on a sign, not quite as local as we had hoped, but mm -hmm. we're here, we got the dish. We are actually right smack dab in the middle of the central market. So if you're wondering where all the background noise is coming from, it's because we're staring at the most trafficked road, I think, in the city. So this is Mi Quang or Mai Quang. It's We've spelled, seen it spelled multiple ways. Yes, as you can see, it's a bit similar to this morning's dish. It's got the uh, big thick rice noodles in there. It's got a bunch of greenery on top. It has some peanuts, but like whole peanuts this time instead of the peanut sauce. We have some little rice crackers in there. The most adorable little quail egg, which I was really excited about. I think there's there's really thinly sliced pork and I think there's gonna be a little shrimp floating around. Oh yeah, a little shrimpy in there. It also has barely any broth, but the broth that it does have should be a bit yellow because it has turmeric in here. Looks a bit similar to this morning's, but should taste pretty different. Because we wasted so much time trying to find this dish, it's now a little bit later in the evening, and we still have one more meal that we really want to try, yeah. so we're splitting this. There's this like yellow goo on top. I'm not quite sure 
what that is. I'm gonna get a big old bite with this pork. Oh no! <laughs> mm. That's really good. Well, it's super savory and a ton of flavor. Yeah, the noodles are a bit different than this morning. Not as squishy, more creamy, I'd say. Oh wow, that meat is so savory and, and salty and delicious. Oh, is it good? That's I great. And a little bit of the peanut flavor as well. Did you just eat that entire oh, no. piece of pork? Oh no, there's another one. You gotta get that pork. The pork is amazing. Is it really good? Yeah, it's great. There's some garlic in there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. This dish is so interesting. You've got quail, you've got shrimp, you've got pork, you've got noodles, crunchy rice crackers. It's got everything. Yep. Who gets to eat the quail egg? You That's the real question. Oh. Look at this little guy. This is not shareable, so no. I'm gonna eat him. Ooh, that's really good. Everything has so much flavor in this dish. I'm wow. really impressed because it looks really, I don't know, mm. unassuming. Well, so far, both noodle dishes today, Dude. some of our new favorites. Yeah, I, I really say. couldn't pick which one was better because they're both a little bit different. And I think that they get all these ingredients from the market right across the street. At least we saw him running off about a thousand yeah. times, I'm assuming, to get things for this. But uh, yeah, it can't get more fresh than that. I wish there were more quail eggs in this because that was the most delicious part. That mixed with the noodles and the sprouts and the sauce in the bottom, it was great. final dish we wanted to try kam ga which is just chicken and rice but it's very famous here but we were really hoping to find just a more local side side street stall and those are really hard to find on google and in our research so we just kind of bumbled around and found a place that had a lot of locals at it so that's where we are now i think it looks pretty legit everything looks super fresh and they had it all ready for us it was super easy and there are a bunch of ladies up at the front you can just watch them cook they are hustling right now they are going crazy making a lot of chicken and rice oh yeah it's Interesting, for some reason I thought it was gonna be a lot more complicated of a dish, but it's super duper simple. Basically, what you wanna look for when you're looking for a more local experience is tiny little red chairs that you can barely fit in. If you see these, then you're more likely to be having a more local experience, that I think. That is definitely what we see. If the table is way too small and the chairs are way too low, then you're doing it right. We have freshly boiled and shredded chicken on the top here. This rice underneath is nice and yellow because I read that it is stewed in chicken broth and then has a little bit of turmeric again added to it to give it that nice yellow sheen. So it should be really like greasy and nice and flavorful. Then again, the beautiful fresh greens on the side, lots of onions. Um, I'm not actually sure what this is, but it's there, the <laughs> cucumber. And then we have a nice plate of fresh chilies and garlic which maybe we won't be uh, getting into tonight. Maybe we'll stick with the uh, chili paste instead. All right, let's give it a go. Just some chicken and rice, I think. Maybe too big of a bite. Oh. Mm, that is absolutely lovely. It's really salty and peppery chicken with some ginger it tastes like in there. The rice is really flavorful. It's got all the fat, I think, from it in there, so it's really like oily to the taste, but it's so good. I'm impressed. It looks like it has the potential to be bland, but it's actually super flavorful. This is great, you guys. We got the chaos in the street over here. People are hooting and hollering. The ladies at the kitchen back there are hooting and hollering. It's awesome. The food is really tasty, don't That's you think? It's so good. Even some of these veggies on the side are like pickled. I don't, I can't even tell it. It seems like a mix between like a jicama or apple or something like that, but it's so good. I just thought it was a big pile of onions, like raw onions, but it's not. Everything today has been amazing. Yeah, and the chicken rice, it's such a simple dish, but when it's done right, it's just like it's perfect flavors. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Well, we had some setbacks for today, but I think overall it worked out. <laughs> the lesson we learned here is that if you want to try these local dishes, don't look up anything online. Just wander around until you find them. It seems a way easier. <laughs> yeah. And really just look out for the red chairs and give it a try. Mm -hmm. But I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us. And like we mentioned earlier, if you know any great spots here in Hoi An or anywhere else in Vietnam, really, leave a comment down below and let us and others know. These were not the only local dishes to try. There are actually quite a few more, but we just couldn't fit them all in in one day. Mm -hmm. And sadly, tomorrow we are headed down to Ho Chi Minh. So 
it was our last day, but we tried to eat as much as we could. Yes. Everything was absolutely de delicious. We're gonna be so sad to leave this area. We have really we enjoyed are. Hoi An. Yeah. Tomorrow we will actually be flying down to Ho Chi Minh. So I guess we'll see you down there. Good night, adventures. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>